What's up guys? I've played my fair share of Minecraft and I've also done my fair share of cheating in Minecraft. And there are some incredibly powerful tools you can use for that. Um, one is just writing your own Python code. And uh, I've done a lot of pretty complex stuff that's taken me hours to set up. But this is going to be just a really easy introductory tutorial of how to control Minecraft with Python. So today we're just going to write a program in Python to be able to mine in a straight line. And this way you can be basically AFK on a server with your friends or whatever on your own server and it'll just be mining for you in survival mode. So let's go ahead and get started. For this video I'm going to assume that you know how to uh, have a code editor like Visual Studio Code. If not there are tons of videos on YouTube about how to set it up. Um, you'll need to install Python and you will also need to install a library called PyDirect Input. Um, and you would do that down here at the bottom by doing pip install PyDirect Input. And of course if I just hit enter it's going to say something like you already, you already have it installed. Yep, there we go. Requirement already satisfied. Okay, so let's just get into coding. I've followed tons of tutorials myself on the internet, especially coding tutorials, and when you're just starting out, it can be really frustrating if someone skips, you know, skips a step, or you just don't know how to do something simple that, um, that I just assume that you might know how to do. So if that's the case, leave a comment down below, and I would be more than happy to uh, answer your guys' questions or make another video with better steps if I skip anything. So, okay, so you'll need to make sure that you have PyDirect input installed, I'm going to go ahead and import that as p, which will just make it a lot easier to use. And I'm going to also import time. And that'll allow us to uh, put delays into our code. So this is a server that I just have running on my own local computer. Um, nothing special at all. I just barely made this world. Um, I'm just standing here in the middle of this field. So, okay, so let's get started by just mining a simple block in the game. So I'm gonna go ahead and get here, um, start, get back to the game, and I'll just mine down two blocks so that I can be right here facing a block as if you were in a mine. Another nice thing about this is that if you're underground, you don't actually have to be placing torches um, if you don't want to, because uh, you don't need to see anything because the computer's mining by itself. But in this case, just for the tutorial, I'm gonna be mining basically above the ground um, during the day so you can see what's going on. So let's go over here to our code. You know, just to make it easy, I'm gonna go ahead and um, I'm gonna set it up to just automatically resume the game by itself whenever I run this code. So let's do P, and remember P is up here, it stands for Pi Direct Input. Um, I am going to also just mention really quickly that a lot of people would probably prefer something called Pi Auto GUI. I'm not using that library because it has issues with uh, being used in games like Minecraft. Um, it just doesn't register it properly and so it won't actually pass the commands in. Um, one other thing for setting up Minecraft to be able to accept commands from the mouse, you'll have to go into options, go to controls and mouse settings, and then make sure that your raw input is set to off. I already had it off. Um, I turned it off earlier to test this stuff out. Um, make sure you'll want to make sure that yours is off. So done, done, done. Okay. Now in the code, I'm going to tell it to just move the mouse over to back to game and click on that so that we can just resume the game every time I click uh, to execute the code. So let's just do p dot click. And I've already tested these coordinates beforehand. Um, if you need help, with testing your own coordinates on your own screen because of course it's going to be different for you. Uh, just, I guess, let me know, or you can play around with it a little bit yourself. So the coordinates for me are 1400 comma 315. And the 1400 tells it to go, it starts up here in the top left corner of the screen and it goes over 1400 pixels to the right and then down 315 pixels. And that is going to tell it to click at those coordinates. So let's just demonstrate real quick. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, execute this code. I'm going to run run the Python file and it does it. Okay, perfect. I'm going to hit escape again so I can get back to that screen 
and let's hit enter a couple times. Um, I'm also just going to do time.sleep for one second, and that way it can just make sure that everything goes well with resuming the game. All right, let's try to mine a block. So I'm going to do P, which stands for Pi Direct Input, dot mouse down. And that will make it so that it basically clicks and holds down the mouse button. Um, we'll want to have it hold that down for, let's just say a second right now. I don't know how, ex how long exactly it takes to mine a block of dirt. Um, and of course, when you're doing this, you'll want to play around with these settings depending on the level of efficiency of your pickaxe. If you're mining stone or whatever, uh, you can play around with this. But I'm just going to do time.sleep1. And that doesn't really tell it to sleep. It just tells it to, it just adds a one second delay between the mouse dot, the uh, P dot mouse down and right here, P dot mouse up. Oops. All right. So that should just mine a block for us. Let's test that. Wonderful. Okay. So we've successfully mined our first block. Obviously, you'll want to mine way more blocks than just one with this code. So next, what we're going to have to do is after you're done mining one block in front of you, of course, you got to tilt the camera down like that. You got to move your mouse down so that you can see the next block. So let's get that working real quick. Okay, we'll want to do P dot move rel. And this is also um, a value that I tested myself beforehand. So you might have to play around with this number a little bit yourself. This is going to tell the mouse to move relative to its current position, which is important. Uh, you can't just tell it like, like we had up here to just click at a certain coordinate because when you're in the game, you don't really have access to a cursor location. It's just wherever you move the mouse. So we'll want to move it relative to where it is right now. So we'll want to move it down the equivalent of 300 pixels. And then we're going to want to repeat this code here, but we'll do that in just a second. So I'm going to go ahead and just let's put this block back here. I'm going to mine that one more time and it should look down to mine the next block, but not quite mine it yet. Good and good. Perfect. Okay. All right. Now what we're going to do is we're going to put this into a function that we can call repeatedly. Um, and that'll help us to make our code a lot cleaner and easier to use. So to make a function, we'll do def mine block. That's what we'll call a function. We want to put a colon there. Oops. And I'm just going to highlight all of these and hit control and right bracket, right square bracket. That's just a keyboard shortcut in Visual Studio Code. But you can just go in front of each of these and just hit the tab key if you want. Um, you'll just want to make sure it's indented so that it knows that this whole thing right here is your function. Now, in order to mine a block, um, we will want to, I'm going to go ahead and put a comment right here so that we know that that is just to resume the game. Um, and I'm going to hit control and forward slash and that'll enter a little pound or hashtag. Um, and that'll, that's how you make comments in Python in case you don't already know. So I'm just going to do resume game. And then here's my function. So we'll want to call that function first. Um, right here is where the program begins in reality, because this doesn't execute unless you call the function. So we'll want to do mine block. That's how you'll call the function. And then we'll tell it to look down. And then we'll go ahead and call that again. And you see how this is the beauty of functions because you don't actually have to include this entire, you know, all this code again. Um, and if in case you haven't, you're not familiar with Python, uh, sometimes you can have a lot of code in a function block um, and you can just execute it just by calling it one time. You don't have to have it be repetitive like this. All right, so let's go ahead and begin this and let's test it out. It should mine, actually let me go back to here to the game, facing forward, and I'm going to run the code. And it should mine the block and then look down and mine that block too. Okay, that didn't work. So let's see. Sometimes it's kind of funny because you'll have to give it a little bit of a delay um, to be able to, for it to recognize that it needs to do its next command. So I'm going to just take a hunch that it's right here after mining the block uh, that it needs a little bit of a delay. So let's do time.sleep. Let's just give it a half second. 
um, and you can play around with this value if you want to. So let's, oh, <laughs> let's see, am I facing the right direction? Right there, okay, cool. All right, let's try that again. Mine's a block, looks down, perfect. Mine's that block, awesome. All right, and then we'll just wanna make sure that it looks up again after that so we can mine the next block. So I'm gonna copy that, Control C, Control V, and we'll change that to a negative 300 so it looks up 300 pixels relative to where it's at. And let's just test that one more time. And you know, a lot of writing your own programs is just this trial and error over and over. There's really no uh, secret to getting it to work right the first time every time. Okay, that worked, so that's great. All right, well, our next step is to walk forward after you've mined the two blocks that are right in front of you. So, to save time, I'm just gonna put this in a function as well. Let's call it walk forward. P dot key down, and that is the command to tell it to press down a keyboard key and keep holding it down. And so we'll tell it to hold down W since that's how you use the keyboard. Uh, that's how you use the keyboard to tell it to go forward in Minecraft. And then I'm going to tell it to sleep for one second. And this is just a guess. Once again, I don't know how long it takes it exactly to walk forward one block, um, but it doesn't really matter because it's just to the next block that's directly in front of you. So it'll stop you anyway. And we'll do P dot key up and W once again. And then we might as well just add this uh, little delay so we don't come across any other issues. Okay, so after we have that, the walk forward function created, we'll want to call that function. So right here, after we finished mining and moving the camera back up, I'm going to call walk forward, and I'll just hit tab to auto fill that, to complete that line. And that should tell it to walk forward for one second, and then Let's just make sure that, that that works. So run the code, mine, look down, mine, look back up, and walk forward, yay, awesome. Okay, that works. So we're making good progress. Um, now what I'm going to do is we want to put this whole thing in a loop. So I'm going to use a while loop and up here at the top, I'm going to make a little section for variables. That's just how I like to do it. You guys can do it however you want. I'm going to make a variable called counter and set it to zero. So that right here I can say while counter, oops. Um, let's do is less than three. So it'll run it twice. Um, and let's go ahead and highlight all of those, holding down shift and the downward arrow key and then control and right square bracket to indent all of that. And that will repeat this block of code. So let's just try that as it is. It should repeat it twice. So mine the block, look down, mine that one, look back up, walk forward, mine it, yes. Just enter the loop and then look back up and walk forward. Awesome. Oh, haha. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I see what I did. Um, this is going to keep going on indefinitely because counter never gets increased because I didn't tell it to. So this is one of those moments where you're like, the computer's being stupid, but really it's you being stupid, the programmer, because you told the computer exactly what to do and it's doing exactly what you told it to do. So I'm going to try and save this. Let's just hit, once it gets back out of there, I'm going to hit escape and go down here and trash okay cool i just closed the terminal and that stopped the code from executing so what we need to do is we need to increment the counter we'll do that by counter plus equals one and that'll add one to counter which is currently zero so that means that counter is initialized to zero you'll enter this code right here this function the while loop um, it'll run through all of this code and then it'll say counter plus equals one, which sets counter, which was previously zero, now counters one. It'll go through this again, counter, add another one to counter, counters two now. It'll go through it one more time. And then when it, when it finally adds counter, uh, when it gets up to three, it'll stop running. So let's just go ahead and check that one more time and make sure that it actually stops. Good. So there's one. 
There's two. And there's three. Perfect, and then it stopped. And so I actually did that three times because I, I set the counter to zero. And so of course it's gonna do it zero for one counter is zero, one and two, if that makes sense. I'm going to add one last final touch to this code, and that is that sometimes when you're mining underground, you will come upon a cave and you'll just walk right into it if this program is running. So in order to fix that, I'm going to set it to where it holds down shift before it starts walking forward. So right here with walk forward, the walk forward function, I'm gonna do P dot key down and let's hold down shift. And then when it's done executing all this code, um, I'm gonna go ahead and let it sleep. And then let's do, let's go ahead and give it sleep again after we release the shift key. So we'll wanna do key up. So that was kind of hard to follow. Um, this is the normal code that we just had. You'll hit shift before you start all of that code. So it'll be holding down shift the whole time it's walking. And then it'll, after it releases the W to stop walking forward, it'll take a break. Then it'll release the shift key and then take another break so it can resume the rest of the code properly. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and run that and let's make sure it works. Good, and then hold down shift, awesome. So that way you won't walk off a cliff or into a cave. Now one thing that this code will not do is it won't save you from lava if you're mining really far down. Um, it won't save you from lava or water. So you'll just wanna make sure that uh, you're at a level that you're really not very likely to run into lava um, and hopefully you're not mining toward an ocean. Otherwise, this code should be great, and you can uh, just change the counter to, I don't know, 100. You can change it to whatever you want. You can change it to one and just never actually increment it, and it'll just go on forever. But I don't actually recommend that because um, it'll, this will the program will keep uh, giving commands to your computer even if you're not in Minecraft, and so it'll kind of just be moving your mouse around and mess up your computer. Um, you'll just have to, you know, get rid of the, the program if that happens. So thank you guys so much for watching. I hope this was a helpful video. If it was, please smash that like button and make sure to subscribe for future videos because I'm gonna be doing a lot more coding videos. Um, I do play a little bit of Minecraft and I also do a lot of coding with crypto trading, uh, which I'll be getting into that, making videos with that very soon. So make sure you subscribe and thanks again for watching. We'll see you in the next video.